Okay, I think we're just about ready to get underway. I have uh, some, a prepared statement to read at the beginning to make sure we do everything legally here. Uh, good evening, uh, my name is Bill Carpenter. I'm the mayor of the city of Brockton and I will be conducting this evening's hearing in my role as the statutory issuing authority for the city of Brockton. A notice of tonight's hearing was duly published in the Brockton Enterprise and this is the second of two public hearings. Uh, the first one was conducted on June 19th. Tonight's hearing is mandated by the renewal provisions of the Federal Cable Act. The current cable television license held by Comcast will expire on March 31st, 2018. The city is currently involved in the federally required ascertainment process. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to first identify future cable-related community needs and interest, and secondly, review the performance of Comcast under its current cable television license. So we're here to either identify future cable-related community needs and or review the performance of Comcast under its current license. Once the city has gathered input, it will forward the results to Comcast in what amounts to a request for proposal. This RFP will basically inform Comcast of the kinds of services and facilities that the city expects will be provided during any possible renewal term. Thus, the testimony that you will give this evening is very important, and I encourage all of you to speak candidly and specifically about any cable-related matters. You must come up and provide testimony in order for your views to count and to be a part of the official record. So please testify. When you come up to speak, please give your name and address. Because this is an ascertainment hearing for the city, <clears throat> I ask that you not pose direct questions for Comcast to answer. All testimony and or inquiries should be directed to me. Finally, I would like to clarify that while this is an ascertainment hearing on cable television matters, there are two related subjects over which neither the city nor I has any authority to regulate. The first is the rates that Comcast charges for its services. The second is the commercial programming that Comcast chooses to show on its cable systems. I realize that these are both important issues for cable subscribers. And while people are certainly free to comment on these matters this evening, it's important for everyone to realize that the city cannot mandate the specific rates that Comcast can charge, nor can the city mandate the commercial programming that Comcast carries on its Brockton cable system. So with those introductory comments, I'll now open up the hearing to comments and testimony from the public. And uh, in the interest of time and trying to get everyone to be concise, uh, we'll ask that there be a three minute time limit on each speaker so that we can keep moving along. It's the same format we use at school committee meetings. Three minutes is a lot longer than it sounds. You can say a lot in three minutes. Um, so I think that as a, a courtesy, uh, I'll invite uh, Mark Lindy, the general manager of Brockton Community Access, to have the, the first opportunity to speak. And then from there, I'll start working down the two sign-in sheets that I have. I'll invite everyone that's asked to speak an opportunity to come up. And then once we get through the list, if I've missed anyone and you'd like to be heard, you'll, you'll absolutely get that opportunity. So, uh, Mr. Lindy, we'll open with you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the City of Brockton for conducting these hearings. Um, this is an important part in the renewal process, and uh, we are hoping that we're here. Uh, we still have time. The contract is up at the end of March of 2018, and we're hoping that uh, a 10-year contract would be what the City of Brockton entertains uh, with Comcast. We hope that we will be funded adequately and properly uh, going forward to allow for growth and expansion. Um, we're looking for uh, capital equipment because equipment changes every, uh, it used to be a seven-year depreciation schedule with an accountant, but uh, it's more so uh, computers don't last that long anymore. Um, right now we have standard definition on cable. We're looking for high definition. Boston is the eighth largest market, TV market in the United States, and the viewers of Brockton and the Boston television market are looking for good quality. We have digital equipment, but we don't have digital channels. 
right now we have four channels. Would like to see the four channels stay in place, a public channel, educational channel, government channel, and Massasoit Community College. Um, would like to see our programs on the program guide. If you go to any other channel, you can see the local programming. Would also like to see that some of the programming, specifically the government meetings, be video on demand. So when you see your local government on Comcast, you could actually see your local government. Would like to see Comcast keep a customer service office or Xfinity store in Brockton because, believe it or not, people come to return their cable boxes to our building and try to do a payment. We can't take the payment. It says Comcast on it. Uh, would also like to support what was said at the last public hearing with the senior citizens in Brockton that are on a fixed income to see um, some kind of a senior discount. Um, I think our best viewers are the senior citizens at, at home, especially the ones that can't get out. BCA, BCCT is very proud of what we've done. We're, we're a 35-year organization. I've been there for 23 of the 35 years. I have a wonderful staff that produces community programming, the high school sports, uh, the government meetings, the community festivals and events, and most of all, the access shows. Believe it or not, we have one producer who's away for the summer who would have been here had he been able to, Mr. Steve Demos, who's done almost a thousand programs. We have Manny Andrade in the audience who's up in the 900s. He's right behind him. And we have longtime volunteer producers that don't get paid a dime to communicate to the community. And we love them and we want them to continue to do what they do. Some of them are here tonight. We called a few people to ask them to come and support us. And we would love to continue to do business. Local television is very important. We don't have a, a full-time licensed AM radio station anymore in Brockton. I've talked to the mayor about that could be another future communi community need for us to do radio, to do just audio, not the video too, or to turn some of the TV programs into radio programs via the internet. So there's lots to look forward to in the future. We need the, the money, the technology, and the support to do it. And I want to thank the mayor personally, um, over 100 programs himself. I knew he was a good communicator when he was on the radio, and then he turned it into uh, talk radio and sports. And he does programming, even though he's a full-time mayor. So I just want to thank everybody for the opportunity to be up here, and uh, I'll let everybody else have their piece. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Mark. So let me just start working down my list here. Uh, Next up would be Bishop Tony Branch, representing numerous community organizations, groups, boards. Good evening. Good evening. I am Bishop Tony Branch. I, 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 I guess I would go with the uh, executive producer of the NAACP Forum. Uh, which is currently on uh, uh, Brockton uh, Cable Access, 25 Montello Street Extension, Brockton, Massachusetts, a 32-year resident. Now, y'all know that I often uh, speak from the heart. I did take some notes, but um, I received so many phone calls from posting that, asking that citizens come here today. And although we can't control a mayor, we thank you for uh, this, this meeting, and we thank you, Council, for joining him. And although the citizens, uh, a lot of citizens can't come here today, one of the clear things that they are speaking about is cost. And I know that we can't control it, but one of the things that has been asked of me is just to mention that if Comcast could have an uh, sort of a la carte system, subscription system for our elderly and our low income, for them to be able to pick the channels, uh, that they want, allowing them to somehow control costs. Uh, we know that uh, cable is actually going out the window. Uh, people are actually cutting the cord, uh, and that started in 2014. So we know that they want to keep some customers, and we think that this might be an opportunity to do that, if that's making any sense. Uh, but I'm here because uh, we have benefited. Many of the community organizations, the boards that I sit here, have benefited from the work at BCA. I'm here because we know that cable companies are making uh, a large amount of profits across the Commonwealth. Uh, but they have a moral obligation, in addition to a contractual obligation, to make sure that we're getting bang for our buck. We're not getting bang for our buck. Uh, in the last couple of years with Comcast, when you look at not having a digital system with respect to BCA, we're not getting a bang for our buck when we, you look at 
um, not providing up-to-date equipment. Uh, quite frankly, I think that the city has been treated uh, disrespectfully. And I, I would ask, Mayor, that as you go into these negotiations, that you make it clear that there's a mandate from the citizens uh, of Brockton uh, that they need to do a better job. Unfortunately, as we know, those of us that have been in business, there's no competition with respect to Xfinity or Comcast, so they are getting away with murder. Uh, quite frankly, we know that a lot of us enjoy, I enjoy their, their internet high speed, but I, I don't need 214 channels. My daughters that are here do not need uh, 214. They watch Nickelodeon. Uh, that shouldn't cost me $160 a month, if, that's, if I'm making any sense. And I think that I am fortunate, but a lot of residents, our medium uh, population, our medium income of the city of Brockton, these folks are not as fortunate as many of us. So I think that we need to be fair. But this is what happens when we have a, a monopoly. But I'm going to use the, uh, uh, something that Dr. King had said at the end of what I'm saying. I think that the work of community access in terms of the work uh, that Mark has done and his team has done and the fact that we could have this sort of programming should be updated. Public access or community access television, in the words of Dr. King, allow us really to be able to express the content of our character and the diversity of the city of Brockton. We're just asking for fairness and we're just asking for something that really is economical. Thank you for allowing me to testify. Thank you. Okay, next up I'll invite uh, Dennis Carmen, uh, representing the United Way of, is that Greater Plymouth County? Am I getting it right? That is correct. All right. Thank you. Nice to see you, Dennis. Nice to see you all. And um, uh, a lot of things I'd like to say. I've got a letter that I'll obviously submit, but I want to read from it. Um, I have been at the United Way for, I'm in my 12th year, but before that uh, was the director of the Main Spring Coalition. So I've worked most of my adult life in Brockton and all the way throughout that tenure uh, have had the benefit of being able to access or connect with these great people at BCA um, from, from all of the <coughs> folks, the paid staff to the volunteers. Um, look, you know, community access being local isn't just good, it's great. Um, the idea that we have the ability to utilize this medium and to have it be able to cover great events great community events particularly, and then to be able to broadcast it out to an even greater number of people who can't otherwise see it is just phenomenal. So we have nothing but good things to say about Mark Lindy and his staff at BCA. Um, we have had annual meetings covered. We have had a lot of our activities, uh, a lot of our partnerships involved in community work. And I have to say that when you talk about the future needs uh, related to cable, we're going to, I think, as a network of human service organizations and nonprofits dedicated to bettering people's lives, we're going to be faced with some huge challenges in the future as we know the federal government seems to be ready to cut back in a major way on a lot of funding. And that's unfortunately going to cascade down to the state. It's unfortunately going to cascade down to the cities and the towns. The bottom line is cable might allow us another form of communicating and connecting with each other so that we can take whatever resources we have and utilize them in the best way possible. We have incredible resources in the city of Brockton and particularly even though we're always chasing dollars in order to do things, it's the human capital that we have that we often miss and forget. It's the people whose experiences and whose willingness to commit, commit their time and their energies and their efforts into making this city a better place. And the cable, cable access has been incredible in their willingness to make sure that all aspects of our human condition are covered all the times that there are gaps where there are not enough resources to meet the needs the cable has been capturing that and broadcasting that. So we at the United Way of Greater Plymouth County and our volunteers and our board of directors would like to applaud the Brockton Community Access, Mark Lindy and his group. We would love to see whatever they need to do the better job that they can do in order to just expand and enhance what we've experienced. We are very lucky in this community to have such a great local access cable. And we're very lucky to have all of the, the individuals who live and work in this great city of champions, and I thank you for the time. All right, thank you, Dennis. Uh, next up, we'll invite uh, Officer Nancy Liedberg, representing the Brockton Police Department. Nice to see you, Officer Liedberg. 
I'm just going to read my statement if that's sure. okay. Officer Nancy Liebberg from Broxton Police, 7 Commercial Street. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to discuss our collaborations with BCA. Hopefully this will give you an idea of some of the projects we've participated in. We did a short series uh, from the Brockton Police Department shows called Brockton Blue. The shows included the canine unit, walking beats, traffic safety, including pedestrian safety, and what to do during a motor vehicle stop, as well as a presentation on opioid abuse. They were very informative and designed to educate while also building a rapport within the community and highlighting the various programs within the department. We have also showcased other programs and collaborations, for example, Brockton After Dark, The Deadly Silence, The Champion Plan, uh, The Police Response to Active Shooter in Schools, as well as Police Academy Graduations. Uh, Mark Lindy has often invited us on his show to showcase and promote current events. And from a law enforcement standpoint, uh, BCA is an excellent partner for us. Uh, we don't have the budget or the ability to market and promote our own programs or events. So within this partnership and networking, we are able to do both by calling BCA. That's all. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Next, uh, I'd like to invite up uh, representing the Brockton Public Library, Paul Engel. Hello, Good evening, Paul. Um, Paul Engel, uh, 13 Haskell Street. I'm a, uh, a one-week resident of Brockton. And obviously, I'm representing the Brockton Public Library here. Um, I started working in December, and I got to know Mark uh, straight away, as he is the chair of the uh, uh, Brockton Library uh, Board. And I, I can't say enough. I mean, Mark has been a real... Uh, benefit for me personally as, as I've transitioned into this job, into the public uh, library sphere. And um, I just want to say publicly thank you, Mark, for, for all your help. Um, from the community access standpoint, um, Mark has been really helpful with getting the programming that we're doing in the library into, the, into our uh, um, doing, uh, I guess, seven-minute segments we do, Mark? Seven-minute segments, and, and I, I can't speak highly enough of his, of his crew. Uh, I, I see them a lot in the library as they film events that are going on. They're professional, they're on top of the game, and they're really great people to have around. Um, some of the things that I think Mark and I have talked about doing, and, and maybe you can bring this to Comcast as some ideas, is, is we would like to have the, um, the library actually wired uh, as, a, as an access point for, for community access. Uh, we could use the, the multi-purpose room for one, we might even be able to do another room or two. Um, and if we could set those up so that we could have um, maybe even do some of the programming that Mark does in the studio done on a remote location. And this is, this is kind of modeling and mirroring what they do at the Boston Public Library now. Mm -hmm. uh, the GBH set up, I think, the first or maybe the second uh, full studio in, in, uh, in a library. And I think that would be an excellent uh, um, partnership that we could establish that yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the only other thing I have to say is that... Um, uh, Mark has a, 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 an archive of, of, um, of um, um, videotapes of, the, um, of veterans that I want to have uh, brought into the library and make those available through our mm -hmm. library. So uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you for, for listening. All right. Thank you, Paul. Okay. Next, we'll invite up a longtime BCA volunteer and host, Steve Foote. Thank you, everybody. Uh, to contrast the previous speaker, I've uh, lived on Sully Road for 58 years. <laughs> uh, the folks at home may, may know me uh, from hosting Democratically Speaking for over 200 episodes uh, and uh, doing at least uh, a couple of dozen uh, election night coverages uh, with Mark Lindy on the front desk. Uh, I believe those programs give the voters a chance to really get to know the candidates that are, uh, are in charge of running a $500 million city budget. I mean, we have 11 councillors plus the mayor. And I can't tell you how many times I've been told, uh, this is the only time we get to see these guys. This is the only time we get to hear them really answer a lot of questions outside of what they have on their uh, handout cards if they get them. So a lot of people do turn into uh, the local community access channel 
for those vital services that they can see what's going on around town without actually having to be out. Someone spoke earlier about some of the elderly people have trouble getting out and they like to watch the local channels. So uh, I think it provides an essential service. Um, most folks at home, if you have a look at your cable bill, you're going to notice there's a line item, there's a bunch of line items at the end of it, and one of them is going to be for local public access television. And uh, I'm, here, I'm here to urge the mayor, and uh, in the next contract, that all of that money that Comcast gives us under that line be used for Brockton Community Access Cable Television production. Because that's, I believe that's critical. That's the only reason the line item is in there. <coughs> And so I think that should be uh, not funneled off for any other use except for Brockton Community Access Cable. We also have a little problem now. Uh, of course, the technology expands so quickly that now uh, there's been some problems with the quality of the uh, telecast from maybe the council meetings or other meetings. And that's because BCA doesn't have the proper equipment. They need the proper equipment. I believe the money is probably there. And if not, in the new contract, maybe we can get that, them to uh, appropriate more money for that kind of thing, because I believe that that's the thing we really need. And the channel guide is critical, because when you go to the, the channel guide now, all it says is local access. It would be a lot easier if somebody could go to the channel guide and it could say city council meeting or, uh, or uh, uh, event at library, whatever it, the case may be. Then the people can plan on uh, watching the thing, and, and I think Mark brought up earlier, as far as um, uh, being able to um, DVR the shows and, and have them available to, so when the people want to watch them, not just when they, certain time slots and blocks, when they're available, so, because everyone has a different schedule, and nowadays I believe that technology is available, and we should, as a big city like Brockton, avail ourselves of that technology. Uh, in closing, I'd just like to say that I think BCA provides a critically important function to the citizens of the city of Brockton, and providing this information is absolutely critical, and um, Mayor, I implore you to uh, make sure that the funding is available for these services. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Okay, next I'll invite... Uh, Manny Andrade, the host of Cello Anastenia. Good evening. Uh, good evening. This is Manuel Andrade. I'm the producer of the program Cello Anastenia. Yes. Um, we've been produced about 906 shows. Wow. And uh, we're very, very happy to serve the community. And uh, I hope we continue to be there. You know, I thank the staff, Mark and the staff. Uh, since I've been there, we've been deal uh, very respectable. And I uh, hope you, we continue to save this community. I'm here. Um, I'm a founder of the Cape Verde Association. Also, we have another association which we've been, been founded for save us since 2000 we call uh, association uh, solidarity uh, inc which uh, are, are offices in uh, 17 prospect street so my life been to save this community all the time i hope on my age i continue to do this that's right okay thank you thank you man You didn't catch that. He said he's produced 906 broadcasts of Sailor and Estenia. 906. Uh, next up, I would like to invite uh, Barbara Gary, please. There she is. Come on up and join us, Barbara. That's all right. Relax. I feel like I'm just among a few friends here. No big I feel deal. Like I'm amongst millionaires in here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and Mark, Mark has been my speech teacher, and I wrote my speech out. And first of all, my name is Barbara Geary, and welcome everyone to this 
opportunity to voice your opinion. And thank you, Mayor, for coming out and you know um, giving us your valuable time. And this speech I wrote, I'm finding now after listening to a lot of people before me that some of this stuff I have to leave out. Okay, so as I said, my name is Barbara Geary. Kim Kardashian once said the perfect date for me would be staying at home, making a big picnic in my bed, eating woodsits and cookies while watching cable TV. <laughs> so I believe today if Kim Kardashian had to have her picnic in bed, she would prefer digital TV coming from BCA if she were watching BCA. <laughs> so I will speak today on how I feel about recording in digital, but our shows airing in analog. I will talk a little bit, of, a little bit on digital media, which I'm cutting that out. So, and I will present my plea case for the ticketing technology and having our digital recording show go out as digital programming. Um, the digital ticketing technology, uh, I think, would be a good idea because it allows the, um, sometimes you want to put up something while you're recording and it allows the viewer to see the, the, the thing going by while your show is going on to um, broadcast important stuff. I know you can put it in as far as editing, but it's nicer um, or it's just a nice uh, piece, captioning nice stuff. captioning at the bottom of your screen sometimes, the ticketing um, thing. And so let me flip the page because I, there's parts I can't talk about um, in my speech. So I am here to support BCA in their great airing um, in for digital format. My comparison of recording in digital and airing in analog is this. It's like um, being accepted as mayor but not being able to go into the office to do what you have to do. It's like entering into a building and you go into the intersign but you never come out. You never go past the exit. It's, it's like um, recording in digital and airing in analog is like money in the bank, but no name on the account to <laughs> withdraw from. <laughs> so, so I'm sure with those examples, you understand my point. We have waited for years to be presented with state-of-the-art equipment. We have been granted some. Yes, thank you for your support. We cannot stop here. There is more programming and development that needs to be um, incorporated and by all means appreciated by staff and the community. I myself, I cannot afford all that Comcast watch, I mean puts out because I only watch very few of their shows and they charge so much and I only need so little. And um, so I want to continue, I want you to continue and go in there and fight for BCA and do the great job that you can do to provide for our community. I have been with BCA for over 10 years. I have produced over two sh 200 shows. Um, the name of my show is Needs to be Seen. It's gospel-based mainly, but I plan on incorporating it um, to um, basic things like how to do a checkbook and um, how to write essays and so forth like that. I'm working on that now. Um, BCA is a great staff. They they change periodically. Um, Mark is a forgiving man. Um, I just met Jacob last night. He was just awesome. Matt and or Mike, I get his name mixed up all the time. I'm telling you, Aaron, they are phenomenal. I don't know if you work with these guys on a close hand, but they they're just so welcoming and so helpful, and they go out their way to help um, me. I know. So listening to people here, I, I believe they help everybody. Um, I'm, so I'm here once again to support BCA and requesting ticketing. I'm here to ask and plea that we go from digital programming to stu um, digital programming in studio to digital programming in our homes. I have quoted a quote by Kim Kardashian from Google. 
I have given three comparisons of recording and digital analog and airing in analog. And my ending conclusion to listening ears and open heart is this. I plea my own amendment in the sight of a cry, help by and by. <laughs> my name is Barbara Geary. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Barbara. Forgiving, Mark. I've heard you called a lot of things, but forgiving was never one of them. <laughs> to write that down. Terry, what do you think of that? Do you go along with that? It's just, I don't know. We may have to strike that from the record. <laughs> uh, next up, we'd like to invite uh, Lynn Smith, uh, representing the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association. Come on up, Lynn. I'm Lynn Smith. I live at 34 Carl Avenue in Campello. I'm also the president of the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association and treasurer of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association. And I thank you all for this opportunity to speak. So we um, polled our members, and this is the statement that we came up with. First of all, we're grateful for the coverage that Brockton Community Access gives to our events. Not only do they allow us to get a message out to the community about our efforts to build better community through shared experiences, they assist with getting the word out about event dates, details, and then they provide continuous and quality coverage of those events. It's our opinion that BCA is a good caretaker of the public, educational, and government cable programming in our city. However, this hearing is about what we'd like to see in the future. And here are our thoughts. Number one, with adequate funding, the first improvement that we would like to see is a high-definition Comcast broadcast signal. Two, the next step we would like to see is an improvement of the quality of the cameras and sound for our public hearings and our meetings at City Hall, whether it's remote control cameras or wireless microphones or better uh, lighting. Step number three, contingent on funding, is to provide funding for interns, more, paid if possible, that can help small community groups like ours not only record our programs, but also edit them into shorter snippets that we can then use um, on our websites and for our promotional purposes because we don't have the funds or the manpower to do that. Step number four, we are suggesting to make sure that 100% of the Comcast commitment of money goes to our community access station and it's not diverted for other uses by the city. Number five, we thought about additional programming with adequate funding. So I know there's a wonderful show about English in job skills and learning English in job skills. What about English as a second language on demand? What about programs about living well and being mindful and holistic about our health? I think Paul mentioned it. We would love to see a remote broadcast from our wonderful Brockton Public Library, and whether it be on history or whether it be sort of a book club format, we think it would be something that would be wonderful for folks to see. Nancy mentioned the educational uh, information that the police department puts uh, together. We'd like to see not only operational information, but also issues of the day, community policing, law enforcement topics. It's another way that we can get to know not only our police force, but our firefighters better. And I think when we establish those type of relationships, it makes a better community. And one thing that I personally would like to see, we have so many wonderful restaurants <coughs> in Brockton, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a cooking show from one of the kitchens of each one of those restaurants so people would know about the cultural crossroads that we are and have the opportunity to go in and try a special recipe. We also would like to see programming appear in the TV user guide on the TV remote. You know, we know when days of our lives is going to be on. Could we please know when the city council meeting is going to be on or Sailor Ernestina is going to be on? We'd also like to see enhanced summer or evening classes offered to community groups or the public to learn more about production and switching and graphics and directing and sound. You know, those classes are offered, but there's a fee, and it would be wonderful if Comcast could underwrite the cost of some of those classes for the students and the population that might not be able to afford those fees. However, all of this is contingent upon funding. 
I want to refer to this um, study that was done, and I'm going to submit this as part of the official record. This is a group of cities in Minnesota that hired Front Range Consulting to find out whether they were getting adequate funding from Comcast for their PEG, their um, public educational and government um, stations. This is the finding that they came up with. It is important to recognize and understand that the compensation received from Comcast for the use of public right-of-way is not an actual out-of-pocket expense that Comcast incurs, but it's an expense that Comcast passes directly on to its subscribers through their rates, and it itemizes it, as was mentioned, on their statements. In this particular study of these particular cities, the finding was that per month, per subscriber, Comcast earned profits after expenses before taxes of $37.15 a month, and they passed along to those cities 44 cents per subscriber per month for public accent. In that two-year period of the study, Comcast profits in that market increased 12.5%, and yet their support for local community cable access only increased 4%. So keep that in mind, please, with any negotiations that go on. Remember that in 2016, Comcast's revenue was $80.4 billion. Remember that their net income was $8.69 billion. And remember that they paid CEO Brian Roberts $33.7 million in compensation and stock benefit that year. So we want to thank BCA for their tireless efforts to share information and events in and around Brockton. Your work, every one of you, does exceptional work and you are appreciated. And the members and supporters of the Keith Park Neighborhood Association and the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association urge the city to hold Comcast accountable, to urge Comcast to fund BCA at a level that's fair and equitable, and to make sure that adequate resources are available so that public, educational, and government access programming will serve our entire community with the best possible equipment, signal, programming, and ease of use. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. And I will, uh, I'll mention it in my closing remarks, but we will, uh, continue to accept written testimony for an additional 21 days after today. So if anyone would like to submit written testimony, uh, you have uh, 21 days from today's date to, to get it in to be included as part of the official record. Okay, next uh, let's hear from Lene Harper of Old Colony Elder Services. Hi, how are you? Appreciate your time. Um, my name is Lynne Harper. I represent Old Colony Elder Services. We're at 144 Main Street in Brockton. I produce the Cable Show Community Options, formerly um, senior, care, senior Options. We have been showing, we have been producing a show since 2002. And in 2015, we changed our name to Community Options so that it could reflect the populations that we're serving. Um, the Brockton Community Access has been very supportive of all of the shows and all of the time and access that they've given to us. There's a lot of in terms of getting our word out that we would not be able to have done without Mark and without the team. So I support them in terms of getting continued funding and in terms of the staff, I would like to thank them publicly for all of the assistance that you and your team have given to us in the in the couple of years that I personally have been producing the show. I don't have much else to say other than thank you for your time. All right, thank you. And next, we'd like to invite up uh, Mary Waldron, representing Bridgewater State University, and also as a member of our community. 
Good Hello, evening, Mr. how are Hello, you? Mr. Mayor. I'm wearing my Bridgewater colors, but they're also Brockton colors, so go. I get to be uh, dual purpose here. My name's Mary Waldron, and I am a resident here of the city of Brockton, 54 Sycamore Street, and I am representing President Fred Clark, who was unable to be here today. But Fred really wanted me to relay his strong relationship, um, Bridgewater's strong relationship, with the Brockton community, Brockton community access, the neighborhoods, economic development, the school system, Massasoit Community College. Um, we feel we're very much intertwined with the city of Brockton. Um, Fred has made a very conscious effort of spending a lot of time here as well, but he has seen the work that Brockton community access and its partners in the shows um, and what they provide to, um, to this community. Um, in addition to that, um, to the support, Fred really does feel the partnership that um, um, that he personally has. He's often referring to um, being uh, going to school at the Huntington School, being born at uh, Brockton Hospital, and that affinity is is something that he feels. Not only just does he visit here, he really feels an integral part. And when he does come here, he's um, he, he he those relationships with with government officials as well as others. But Bridgewater State University has 11,000 students. They have over 60,000 alums, and many of them live right here in this community. So when we're looking for ways to continue to partner, we look for ways to not only with um, the Brockton Community Access, but also our partner in, in, with Massasoit, figuring out ways. And I think that it was Lynn who mentioned about internships, and I know Jessica Bishop of Bridgewater State University student had interned at BCA and, and has since gone on, but those are the things that are, that are so important. So when you have a, someone come and work they know where the east side is and where the muck is and where, <clears throat> where all the different sections of the community. And that's what's so special about our students as well. Um, I know that the internship piece is important, um, but also how we as a university, for whether it's our engagement with the, um, the business community, um, Fred will be the incoming chair of the Chamber of Commerce um, next year, and he does see that as a very strong role in what, what higher education and his partnership with the K through 12 is going to be. Um, so Fred's relaying to me that he sees BCA work as exceptional um, and wants us to also be supportive, whether it's internship and or other means to support the resources that can be improving and upgrading the equipment. On a personal note, I recently attended, it was last year when BCA put their celebration at the War Memorial. And if anybody had attended, you look around the room like I am today, and you see the diverse population of our community. They're finding a voice, they want to be engaged, and the way they're able to do that is through, Bro through Brockton Community Access. And so we feel as Bridgewater State to be a, a very strong piece of that. On another side note, I think you need to have Lynn Smith be part of your negotiating <laughs> But thank you on behalf of President I think I'd Clark. rather have her negotiating with me than against me. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mary. Okay. Next, uh, we'll invite up Joan Madden, uh, BCA volunteer and also representing Messiah Baptist Church. Hi, I'm Joan Madden from Brockton all my life. I um, say that because um, I have a lot of contacts and a lot of people that I speak with, and they tell me that they watch my show that I produce. I'm the um, president of the Salisbury Park um, Committee. We give um, picnics every year in September. It's the Saturday after Labor Day, if anybody's interested. But anyway, um, I talk a lot with people, and they tell me how they watch Messiah Baptist uh, Church on TV. And there's a lot of shut-ins that appreciate the fact that they are able to tune in because they can't make it to church. So I um, feel good about that, and, and I've been getting nothing but good remarks. We, every once in a while, there's some criticism, but you're going to get that no matter what you do. But I would also like to see um, Comcast, I mean, um, BCA have a controversial show where people can call in and give their opinions. Every once in a while I think about that, and it would, that would be nice to have. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Joni. OK, 
Okay, uh, next step uh, on our list here, uh, Ray Henningsen, former member of the Brockton School Committee. Good evening. Thank Good evening, you for Ray. having me. My name is Ray Henningsen. I'm 305 Bel Air Street, Brockton, Mass. Uh, first off, I want to thank BCA, who without them so much of the programs we watch uh, wouldn't be here. So thank you very much for all you guys do. I'm going to speak on two issues, one uh, more of a formality and one more of a personal issue. Um, all right, so open and transparent government. As a conservation commissioner and a candidate for local office, this is critical to keep public aware of what is going on about our candidates and what is going on in our, in our community. What I would like to see in the future is all types of meetings taped, as, such as conservation commissions and other meetings to keep that transparency in government so people do know what is going on in our community. With more robust contract, with additional funding and support, I believe we could have more transparency in government. On a personal note, back in, well, it seems like forever that my daughter graduated high school, um, but it was only a couple of years ago. She's now a, 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 gonna be a sophomore in college. Um, during the graduation, my mother had taken ill and wasn't able to attend the graduation. Because of programs that BCA puts on, she was able to actually watch her granddaughter graduate. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it was, yeah. it was a great event for her. Um, you know, she really would love to have been there, but obviously, you know, she couldn't. But because we have that, she's able to do that. And she's not the only one that is in that position. Mm -hmm. There are many elders who can't get out, who can't go to various functions. So having cable access allowed her to be there. I support BCA and hope this contract is renewed, and I would uh, hope that uh, Comcast would look at additional funding to make sure that we pour as much money as we can from them into this, put 100% of the contract into uh, getting digital programming, getting more access to, to programs, better sound, better, you know, better equipment. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Okay. Uh, I'd like to invite up now uh, Laverne Gordon, representing Love Life Now. I didn't even see you sneak in, Laverne. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So I, as Mayor said, I'm representing Love Life Now Foundation. We are an awareness arm against domestic violence that tries to keep the issue in the forefront as much as possible, not just when something is happening in the news, but throughout the year so that people can understand that this is an epidemic that is affecting one in every four women. We host initiatives throughout the year to get people out and about talking about this issue. And BCA has been an integral part, not just about getting the word out about domestic violence, but our initiatives that get people out and about realizing that it could be affecting someone here in this audience and they not know about it. I have had four folks just within this year alone reach out to me to say, I've seen, <clears throat> I've seen, your pro I've seen the segment that you appeared on on BCA and I wanna thank you for speaking up about domestic violence. Um, one, and I, I, I'll mention three of the initiatives that we've hosted that BCA has covered. One, the homeless brown bag and care where people are able to um, gather toiletries and um, care package items that the homeless can receive along with a brown bag lunch and come out and volunteer. Folks have watched our segment on BCA and have shown up to volunteer with the homeless. That is amazing. People have reached out because of that. Uh, the other one that just happened this past, uh, early on this June, is our annual walk in heels against this issue. So we walk about a mile through DW Field Park, come back and have hot dogs, ice cream. Three people reached out to me <laughs> to come out and be part of this walk. It benefited um, and raised awareness about the, tra the tragedy that happens post losing someone um, to domestic violence. Families are faced with the issue of how to deal and cope with the loss of a loved one. We all, I think, remember the, the case about Eugenia Montero that happened early on this year in January, right here in Brockton, where her abuser shot her and then went into the woods and killed himself. 
this is something that is a prevalent issue. And we raised awareness about it during that walk. Well, folks came out because of BCA, the local coverage, right? So we are able to reach folks not just in, uh, you know, in person, but where they're at. Domestic violence is something that is not something that is talked about. It's looked, up, looked upon as shameful. So to have a survivor or a victim watching something on TV and say, oh my gosh, I can relate to what she's talking about, and then get the encouragement to reach out for help through that, priceless. I encourage Comcast. Comcast has a, um, a segment of their organization called Comcast Cares. Well, I hope they care enough to keep BCA in, the, in funding, getting funding and increasing their funding so that events like this and news like this and everything, every, everything else that everyone else has already talked about to be able to, to, to reach those where they're at. I really appreciate you guys having this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Laverne. Uh, so next, uh, reluctantly, I'll call up a BCA volunteer staff member and former member of the mayor's office, Nubi Rateau. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Newbie. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so, guys, um, you guys know Newbie Red Toe. Um, just want to say a few things. Um, started doing TV production when I was 13, 20 years old right now, so about 15 years, basically, um, of my career has been involved in TV production. Within those 15 years, I was able to, um, not to two more on, be nominated for an Emmy Award, produce six award-winning documentaries, travel around the country, um, you know, work for the mayor's office, and, and now, I'm, now I'm teaching. That does not happen if I was not involved in cable. It just doesn't happen. So just the importance of what cable done for my career and what it could do for other people, I think is really crucial. So I just want to speak about in terms of the youth. Um, it was able to give me the opportunity to do training, to learn equipment, to learn how to edit, um, which turned into a career. So I would like to see that going forward. So things like additional funding for more staffing for training purposes, I think would be huge. You know, for there could be other newbies, other Peter Zimbors, um, other Mike Simmons, Aaron Tebow's doing different things in the community. So I think that's really crucial. Um, and also funding for Brock Community Access, but funding for uh, Massasoit and, and Brock High School as well. I think that's really important just to get that base on, on and, and that won't continue to be on the same page. Um, so I just think that's really crucial. And also, I think the training point is really important because let's just say, you know, I know Ray mentioned things like the conservation meeting or any type of meeting out there. You train someone, you train a volunteer, now those volunteers can get the equipment recorded themselves. So you're now you're broadening your scope, you know, your scope in terms of what you could do in terms of um, recording different things. So, you know, going forward, I just want to say Brock Community Access is important to me from my, you know, in terms of what they've done for my career. I can safely say without Brock Community Access and the staff, Really, does you know? I, I'm not sure where I'd be in TV production, so I just want to say thank you to you guys. But um, just going forward, just you know, adequate funding for more staff for more training, and um, in, include Master Sword and Brockton I as well. Thank you. All right, thank you, newbie. <laughs> okay. Uh, Representing a program A Deadly Silence, Larry Curtis. And Peggy Curtis. And Peggy Curtis, okay. I'm sorry, Peggy. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, BCA, for this opportunity. Um, it's well known that um, we as parents, uh, the parents of two sons that became addicted with the heroin crisis that we are now seeing throughout, you know, city of Brockton, South Shore, and across Massachusetts, across the United States. As parents, we suffered in silence. We didn't know what to do, where to go. We were on an emotional roller coaster. And then one day, we kind of got the courage. We talked to one another and we said, no parent should have to go through this type of an experience or, or learning curve and uh, deal with somebody suffering with a substance abuse disorder as, our, as we were as parents with our two children. 
Uh, we are blessed parents today because both of my children are with us. They're in long-term recovery today for three and four years respectfully, and we know that many parents have lost their children to this horrible, horrible disease. But one of the things that we were able to do was to draw the courage and ask for a meeting with Brockton Cable Access and pitch the idea of a program that we have produced in the last six years called the Deadly Silence. Uh, Without the efforts and support of Brockton Cable Access, uh, Mark Lindy's leadership, the staff who have been phenomenal, um, we wouldn't be standing here today delivering 123 episodes, I believe, Peg. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and I want to let Peg talk about the guests that we've had and the importance of those guests to the show. Hi, I'm Peggy Curtis, and I live at 153 Dixon Road. We've lived there for the last 19 years. And again, I'd like to thank BCA for giving us the opportunity to learn. Um, I became director by default. I learned how to edit by default. Um, and uh, the ease of use of the equipment and the training was excellent. So I thank all of them uh, who've helped us. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about the people who we've interviewed over the last six years and how we've affected the community. Um, we've had so many parents who've lost children to overdose. We gave them the opportunity so that they could talk about their children, memorialize them, bring pictures. It's a heartbreaking story that we hear over and over and over again. It's the same story. Um, we've had uh, pediatricians, leading pediatricians from Brockton, talk about the effects of marijuana on the teenage and growing body. We had an obstetrician from Good Samaritan Hospital talk about the effects of drugs on the um, unborn fetus and the mother while she's pregnant. We've had DEA agents talk about the effects of drugs and how they have affected law enforcement. We've had social workers talk about working with teenage children and the long-term effect of marijuana on their learning and their cognitive abilities. We've had many, many recovering addicts come and talk about their story and how they recovered, and it gives hope and inspiration to the other recovering addicts out there. And we've had senators and state representatives talk to us about the legislation that's in the State House now that affects the crime that's produced from drug use, the legislation that affects the recovering addict and how many days they can spend in recovery, and um, the insurance and other efforts that are out there that are helping our recovering addicts. Um, but we have more work to do. Unfortunately, this epidemic is not slowing down. It's increasing. We're getting attacks from our uh, healthcare system. So every resource out there that a parent can get or a parent of a loved one who's died, um, who needs help dealing with their uh, grief, they need this program. This program is essential, and I am so grateful that we can do it. Unfortunately, who we help, we don't always know. But we know the resources are out there, and we're able to get out in the community and give more people the access to the, the resources that they need to help combat this um, epidemic. I, I just want to say one of the challenges that we see in cable access today as it relates to Comcast is the ability to take a program like A Deadly Silence and allow it to be shared with other communities who are dealing with the same epidemic. Uh, I'm not a technician, but I understand we have an analog system, but we're working in a digital society today, and that the only way that our program technically gets out into other communities where we are aired in Taunton at the moment, we have aired in Weymouth, I believe. And Hingham. And Hingham, in Hingham. Um, that West, West Bridgewater. West Bridgewater as well. We have to make copies of discs and take them down to the cable stations. I have to believe that whatever the support that Comcast does financially for the city of Brockton, we've got to be able to update the technology so that programs like A Deadly Silence and many of the programs that we've heard about here tonight can be shared, you know, with other communities. We're all, in the case of A Deadly Silence, we're all suffering in silence. We need to share this information collectively out there and, and let people know that there is hope for recovering in uh, the addiction arena out there. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
Okay. Uh, from Fuller Craft Museum, Titi, are you here? Yep. Here you are. Hey, Come on up. <laughs> Thank you for uh, letting me come today to talk um, about BCA. My name is Titi Nguenya, and I've been Director of Communications at Fuller Craft for six years, and also a Brockton resident for eight years. And um, one of the main missions of Fuller Craft is to actually support uh, arts in the Brockton community and to provide, be a uh, resource for Brockton residents. And BCA has been a wonderful partner in this effort. Um, there's so many wonderful ways in which Brockton Community Access has supported Fuller Craft Museum. Uh, they're always willing to come out and film special events that serve the community. And in doing so, they weave together the community they weave together those threads of culture and politics and community so that viewers stay informed of all of the rich offerings that are happening around town and all the interesting individuals that reside here and the important issues in the minds of Rocktonians. Uh, there is a nascent creative economy that is blossoming here and if there's nobody to capture that and film it, no one else will know about it. So it's really important that BCA is there to do that, to take that role and to show how we are progressing. Um, BCA comes to film our Sensation Days, our Free Fun Fridays. They came two years in a row to film our South Shore Indie Music Festival, our, um, our chamber music performances with the Brockton Symphony Orchestra and Thursday night jazz performances and, and so much more. Um, with over 23,000 subscribers, you know, they're one of our top venues for reaching Brockton residents. Whenever I go on Mark's show, Greater Brockton, we joke because I've, um, I've been on that show for so many times and a record number of times. And it's always a good professional experience. Um, I always get the sense that they really care and they're about getting the word out about the museum. So like there are partners, they're always asking me the right questions to get the right information out so that people will actually engage and come out. Um, and that's, that's so important. Um, there's no other really affordable venue like that that reaches so many people. The first time I realized how many people watched uh, <laughs> BCA was uh, when I was at the museum and a visitor came up to me and they recognized me from being on Greater Brockton. And then, you know, again it happened at the supermarket and then again at Home Depot and, and it was, it's wonderful to know that there's a venue where you can actually reach people in the community. Um, they do such a professional job and create high quality content. Uh, just the other day I saw a video online and it was edited, filmed and edited by BCA. And you know, they had an interview with our educational coordinator. It was for Free, Free Fun Friday. They had um, you know, uh, captured all the, the craft activities that were going on that day and all the people who were there at the museum enjoying it. And that is so vital for us to let people know that this is their museum and that they should come and enjoy it. Uh, so, you know, we, we really thank you for that. We really thank them for that exposure because, uh, you know, you can't develop that kind of content. Uh, it takes thousands and thousands of dollars to get that kind of promotion out there. And, you know, we don't have that kind. Uh, and it's a blessing that they're here so that we can actually uh, promote the museum in that way. So to Mark and Jay and Aaron and Sherry and Newby, who has moved on, and to the rest of the BCA staff, I just want to thank you for your professionalism, your, your craft, you know, your willingness to go out and capture and promote and encourage all that's going on here, all the positive, um, positive wonderful offerings that Brockton has. And um, I just ask you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to do all that you can to support them to get them the right funding, to get them the right staffing and equipment, and um, do all, all that you can to, to help them in this. And that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, TT. OK, uh, we have the folks from Massasoit Community College here. So uh, Ed Krasno, would you like to come up? 
Deanna will get you next after Ed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the opportunity to speak today. Great to have you here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, highlight a few things about the long uh, partnership that uh, Massasoit Community College has had with the City of Brockton, and we're very proud of that uh, long partnership with the City, um, and echo uh, all the positive things that I've heard about Brockton Cable Access today and the staff, many of whom are Massasoit graduates yeah. from our media program, um, and Mark, who uh, teaches at Massasoit. So we have a very uh, long-standing relationship. As Mark Lindy said in the beginning, there are four access entities in Brockton, and they have been since the uh, early 80s. That's uh, BCA uh, and the BCCT board, the uh, high school uh, government, and Massasoit. And Massasoit has been providing uh, high quality programming to the city of Brockton and the residents of this community since about 1984. The Massasoit Channel was founded in 1985, and we've been part of every uh, contract uh, negotiation and received funding from through the city from Comcast to support our uh, ongoing educational and programming efforts since the early 80s. So I uh, welcome the opportunity to, to continue to be part of that process. Uh, I was on the, uh, as an invited guest on the Cable Advisory Board through the last process, and I'd like to be part of that again. I find it both um, uh, an educational experience as well as um, and it gives, gives us an opportunity to, um, to share how, how we can both enrich the community, but how the community is uh, enriches uh, Massasoit and what we do. Um, our, I was, uh, in 1989, I graduated college. I was hired as the BCCT program coordinator for Massasoit Community College. So the foundational partnership uh, with Massasoit, um, uh, we were producing programming uh, since the early 80s and since then for to serve this uh, Brockton community. Uh, I'll echo the technology uh, challenges we'd like to see uh, Comcast upgrade from standard definition broadcasting in old square screen to high definition widescreen as the world transitions now to ultra high definition. At very least, it would be great for educational access here in Brockton and in, in the community to be in high definition. And, um, and we'd like to, um, sorry, um, <laughs> uh, Massasoit, as a part of the uh, greater Brockton community, we serve uh, cultural, educational, um, uh, schools at the college were part of the fabric of this community. Uh, we'll, we'll be having uh, kids from the Arnoon School and the Baker School at Massasoit's television studio in just a few weeks, and um, we want to continue in our partnership with the city. Um, as uh, one of the things that we did a few years ago was invest in a, a streaming and coding system. So, in addition to the Massasoit channel on the cable system, we also stream uh, our channel live on the internet. Uh, one of the things that we uh, would like to do, and uh, we hope uh, that we can do this with continued uh, support from uh, funding through uh, the city from Comcast uh, Access Funds, is to provide assistance to the city. In the past, we have provided live streaming services to the city of Brockton for various events, including uh, some events that you've been part of, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. And we'd like to provide that partnership and actually give streaming uh, channel access to the residents of Brockton by uh, sharing our access of our system to BCA, the, the government channel, and the high school channel. So uh, while that is just one of many initiatives that we partner with Mark and others on, um, we partner regularly on events in the city and at Massasoit that are held often there, and we share programming uh, frequently. So um, to conclude, um, I just wanted to thank the city for uh, for the past support and look forward to our continued uh, relationship in uh, with the new contract and support all four cable access entities in the city. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. So uh, also representing Massasoit, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> uh, also representing Massasoit, Deanna uh, Yamin. You're already on your way up before I even called you. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and all our friends in the room. Uh, my name is Deanna Yamin. Um, I represent uh, the students at Massasoit Community College, one Massasoit Boulevard, for the last 10 years, and proudly so every day, and I'll do the same tomorrow. Um, 
we serve over 2,200 Brockton residents every day on campus. Over 40% of them uh, identify as people of color, and most of them are also, uh, no surprise to anyone here, on the lower end of the socioeconomic uh, ladder. So we're very proud to make sure that they um, have a chance to have their voice heard in a variety of ways. And um, Massasoit TV has increased its commitment to provide our students not only a voice, but also an education to know how to be heard, which um, to me is the bedrock of citizenry. You need to, you can care, but if you don't know how to present what you wanna say, you're not gonna be as involved. So we're very proud of that, as well as, I mean, I think Ed alluded to this, we have hundreds of middle, stu students, middle school students on campus every year, and they, on the way out, you say, what do you remember? The cookies in the cafeteria, and I was on TV. <laughs> and they come back every year, and they're just, and they wanna go to college, they wanna finish school. Um, Everyone in here, all of our partners do those same things. And so we're not only proud of doing it, but we're also proud that over the last few years, um, we've increased our commitment. We've hired two full-time faculty members in the media area. Um, everyone knows Mark Lindy is one of our instructors. We're very proud of that. Barbara Geary is one of our recent students. Great seeing you tonight, Barbara. Um, and so we're proud of that. And as Ed mentioned, we want to open up the collaboration that has always existed even more. I mean, we'd be proud to stream more and more. Um, I can speak for Ed because I'm up here. Um, you know, he and I will show up anywhere anyone wants to be so we can talk about those things. Because Comcast can afford it and Brockton deserves it, right? I, I, I don't, seriously, I don't want to squabble over money between us. I would love someday for someone to tell me that Brockton was over-resourced. I would throw a party and pick up the tab. Right, so what I don't want to ever do, and I don't think anyone in this room does, is let's you know, try to nickel and dime each other. Comcast is very well resourced. The city needs it, the city deserves it. Um, we're proud to be part of it. We'll show up anywhere, anytime, and do anything anyone needs. So our ask is uh, that people take our invitation seriously. And my, uh, the other request of the college is just to let us know, Mr. Mayor, what we can do for you, for our other partners in the room. What can we do for you and what can I do for you? Because we're ready to be here, we have been. Um, we're not going anywhere, we love this place. Um, and I just really wanna thank everybody for the opportunity tonight. Thank you, sir. Awesome, thank you. Okay, next uh, we'll invite up uh, community member Patrick Quinn. If the elected officials, I'm getting to you in a minute, the format we had set up called for public first and then elected officials. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for having this meeting tonight. Uh, my name is Patrick Quinn. I live at 78 Addison Street. I was a Brockton Water Commissioner. I am right now a volunteer Brockton representative on the Plymouth County Water Commission. Um, but my day job is I'm actually the camera operator on the CBS TV show, uh, The Blue Bloods. We go back to production uh, next month, or next week, rather. Uh, I don't know, I'm just a little tired here. Sorry, bad stomach ache, bad, bad thing of uh, poison ivy this year, too, so I'm getting over it. But anyhow, there's all kinds of great stuff said today, so I'm going to start with the first thing is negotiations. Lynn Smith said it all, actually. This is a multi-billion dollar company, and you're looking at the studies that she said, and there's other studies around the country where top-notch community access in communities like us create better communities and also create a better atmosphere for economic development and growth. That has to absolutely be, be brought to the table in negotiations with, with, with uh, Comcast. You've heard it through other people here tonight, a la carte channels, it's absolutely ridiculous. Full disclosure, I've completely unplugged. I only have internet from Comcast because I don't want to pay all this money for only watching two channels. And other communities at our sizes are doing that with other cable providers around the country. So. Comcast will absolutely try to put a wall up and say no to you because they're a billion dollar company. But you know what? We can walk away from them because we can say to them, we'll go find some, some competition for you because they have no competition here. So that's the first thing is negotiations. Um, the second thing is I do want to thank BCA and Mark Lindy and his staff. They're absolutely wonderful. If they weren't there, this community would probably fall apart a little bit and you'd have riffraff everywhere. They're the ones pretty much holding off the riffraff from downtown. And I want to thank you for that, absolutely. Um, and the next thing you've heard, too, is the money. The money is there. Um, so the big question is, is all the money committed by Comcast to the city going to BCA? We need to make sure that all the money that Comcast is giving to the city goes to BCA. We need to make sure Comcast tells us all the numbers and we have all that information that we can absolutely make sure that this thing is amazing. Because um, what, what, you, what you've heard here tonight is you hear a lot of, a lot of analog and high definition. 
can you imagine what these guys would look like if they were in high definition? I mean, it'd be great, you know? Um, and being in the film industry, um, it is high definition. And if you want to call ourselves a city of champions, you can't have low shelf stuff. You have to have high shelf stuff. Because Barbara Gary, we are all millionaires in this community. We really are. Because we're a city of champions, and we have to have the equipment to show that we are a city of champions. We just had some filmmaking, uh, pretty, uh, sorry, I'm just nervous. I don't know why. I just had a bad stomach ache today. Um, we had film companies coming here that I know, and they were a little astonished to see the dilapidation of what we don't have here. Um, through my experiencing with them and also their own looking into it, uh, we have to get the equipment into City Hall. We've got to start being more open government with our BCA ca cable access, as Mr. Huntington said. We have, to, we have to do that. That's the way a city of champions operates. And we have a great opportunity to have a better contract to put all this money towards what we need. And now for the other possibilities beyond just getting better equipment and, and wiring, the War Memorial Building, the middle schools, everything like that, all these government meetings should be wired. I mean, we're a city of champions. I travel across the country working on films and movies, and I go and see other communities our sizes, and everything is online. And those communities are actually way more vibrant because why? Because they're doing it like cities of champions do it. And the standard of that is put it all online. Put it on government. Get it out there. And we can do that. We all know we can do that because you know why? We're, we're millionaires. That's why. But here's my selfish thing too, the possibilities, is that if we have more money for BCA, is that there's one thing for me, this is my selfish thing, is that the tower at tower, tower Hill at uh, DW Field Park, it's closed half the time because of safety issues. We could probably take the money from BCA and do a hookup system with, with, with cameras and video cameras and put it online and have a 24-hour feed to our tower. So there you go, safety right there, public safety. And uh, everyone will go there. You go into the tower, I'm going to go watch you on cable. You know? Or you could also put a TV out there, a kiosk out in the park to have people see people up at the top of the towers. And there you have 24 hours feed and you have public safety and people want to go and do things which creates what? Economic growth and development. Um, that's my selfish thing about um, what I think possibly should be. I'd love to see something like that so that tower can be open. Because I go and ride my bike there on Sunday mornings. There's a lot of people there and everyone's asking, why isn't that open? And I'm looking for solutions to get Brockton better and we can do it through BCA because BCA has given so many solutions to this community and so much value that this organization has to be fully funded no matter what we do and we have to make sure Comcast gives us as much money as we can get from them. So I'm going to stop talking because I'm rattling now. But thanks. All right. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, just double checking my list. Uh, before we go on to elected officials, are there any other members of the public that wanted to be heard? Oh, we have another list. Okay, how about uh, Father Joe Rake? Is Father here? Come on up, Father. Good evening. Hey, Father, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Good. Okay. Good. Uh, as you know, I'm the pastor of three churches, Christ the King, Our Lady Lords, and St. Edith Stein's parishes. And um, it's, a, it's a juggling to be managing the three, but it's, um, it's also very exciting and fulfilling. And one of the things that has been a great blessing to us in the last five years is um, because of BCA, uh, allowing folks to film the masses that we have in our church. And uh, so the people who can't come to mass are now able to see the Mass. So all these people who for years have felt somewhat left out because they can't get to church are now able to see the Mass. And we alternate. So one week it's at Christ the King, next week it's Our Lady Lloyds, next week it's Edith Stein. So they see three vibrant communities, and as they're watching it, they feel part of it. And uh, so we have many people who are shut-ins who were able to come to Mass years ago and now aren't. And, and now we're able to have Mass because of BCA. And uh, it's made a huge difference. And we also have people who are learning about the faith. And uh, for them to know that they can go online and, and they can, at different times, watch the Mass, um, it, it helps them to understand it better because they're able to watch it again. After they've been to Mass, you know, a few days later, they're able to watch it again. And um, it's, it's been a great blessing. So the, the community, I think, is enriched because of BCA. And uh, our churches are, are more complete. So we don't have people feeling left out where they feel very included. That's their church, and 
they feel that they're a part of it because of it. So I'm very grateful for BCA. The time slots that they give us um, is invaluable. And um, if it could, as Comcast could help us with uh, even more funding, uh, high definition for these, uh, the services that we have in our churches would be uh, even better. So whatever we can do, I'm grateful for what we have. And I'm trying not to be selfish. We'd love to have more time slots, but I know that everyone here <laughs> would like to have more time slots. But, uh, but whatever we can do, uh, BCA has been a great gift to us and to the faith communities in town. Thank you. Thank you, Father. And so uh, while we're on clergy, also uh, Pastor Houston Creighton. Pastor's here. So sorry for my tardiness. No, we're still going right along here. You just uh, got towards the end of the list, yeah. that's all. Well, I, um, I'm the senior pastor of Lincoln Congregational Church, also known as Lincoln Church Ministries. Uh, we've been in the community for 120 years. I've been 31 31 of those 120 years, <laughs> the significant portion. And uh, the, the um, Brock the Community Access has been a blessing uh, to our church. We were on WBET, WXBR, for 26 years. Many um, parishioners and community members used to listen to that broadcast religiously. We visit nursing homes now, and there's a lot of the kids that are there remember the broadcast and so forth. It increases our public profile and people that would not normally set foot in the church uh, get to get a service at home, you know, in the privacy of their own homes. We have a message of hope. We have a message of uh, deliverance for those who are in need of mercy and grace and so forth. And so they have access to that as well as uh, the many programs that Lincoln Congregational Church is involved in. We work with the uh, police, the city operation, divinity, and so forth. We give out 30 tons of food. We have uh, various times that we, we do certain things with the community and we're able to um, uh, uh, share that information on a regular basis. So we're, we do more than theology. We do some practical uh, uh, issues that involve people in life in terms of uh, their sustenance. And uh, it it's just uh, increases our public profile. It really does help us to do what we impacted, that we've been called to do in the community, that's to impact the community in a positive way. And I think it would be uh, an understatement to, to you know, say that the community cable doesn't uh, really help the churches in this, in this city, this great city. And I, I believe it also uh, sensitizes us to the various cultures diverse uh, people of varied backgrounds in this city. We're a melting pot here, and I believe it, it engenders a sensitivity, appreciation for other cultures as we view uh, some, of the, some of the programs on um, cable. I, I like watching the Greek programs, especially when they're offering food. <laughs> and uh, and uh, a number of the other programs, uh, the Haitian community and so forth, where largely African-American, uh, uh, continental African-American blacks. It's a, it's, it's a melting pot. It's, we have diverse background of people, and I think it really helps in us understanding and being more sensitized to our, our buried background. So I believe it's a tremendous vehicle uh, of bringing us together as a city of champions. There's, there's, no, there's no championship without unity, and certainly uh, we have, uh, I, I believe we're, unifying with the help of this great mayor here. I give, have to give him a plug tonight. So he, he's, he's doing an excellent job in terms of that. So we, I knew uh, there was a reason I saved you for towards the big close. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I really believe it, it, it does help us understand that we're all, you know, we may have gotten here uh, uh, on various ships, some on the Mayflower and some on the slave ships, but we're all in the same boat we're now. On the same boat now. And so uh, we... we uh, we appreciate this opportunity to come and say something in support of uh, Brockton Community Access. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. okay, now do we have any other community members that would like to be heard that have not had the opportunity to testify yet? 
Any other community members that would like to be heard? We have someone? Okay. So just come on up to the microphone and uh, just please give your name and address. And we ask you to limit the comments to three minutes. Hi, John. How are you? Hi. Good evening, good. Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you. My name is John Messier from um, Brockton, resident of Brockton, uh, business owner in the city. I um, go to Our Lady of Lords, but the Tri Parish. I'm the producer of the show with BCA. It's um, invaluable. It's terrific uh, that our parishioners, not only can they see the mass, as Father Joe mentioned, but also the people in, can be involved in the show, along, uh, taping along with uh, editing and uh, producing the show so that uh, I think it's five years running, if I'm not mistaken, that we've uh, had with maybe a handful of missing episodes. It's really a, a success, a huge success for our parish to see the local mass. Uh, not that you don't want to see the Boston mass, uh, which you know a lot of parishioners do watch that, but the local mass makes them involved with their local community. Um, the funding I know is key with um, maintaining BCA, and I know that um, along with everyone else mentioning high definition is the key, you know, uh, for programming. We would like to um, obviously utilize whatever we could to make our program that much more vibrant, that much more um, accessible to people, and to uh, have them, you know, leisurely enjoy um, their faith at home. And um, one thing I can say is just what they've done, uh, Mark Lindy and BCA, is incredible for us by allowing us to meet with them regularly, do special events, and what we want to do now going further, and I think it's huge for the city. Um, as you know, Mr. Mayor is um, involved in all the communities, uh, diversify so that the Haitian community, the Cape Verdean community, the English community, everybody can be seen as one tri parish, and that's our goal, is to bring everybody together. And um, within, you know, within our grasp, I think we can attain that and go forward with huge success. Okay? Great. Thank, Thank you, you, John. Uh, Jean? Good evening, everybody. How you guys doing? Um, I just want to say thank you, of course, Mr. Mayor, for you know taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here. But I'm not going to speak for too long. I would like to thank each and every single one of you, you know, for taking the time to come here and testify about this issue. I mean, we had some amazing testimony about what it means to have BCA in Brockton. And of course, I would like to thank, um, the ch I mean, Mark Lindy, not the chairman now, of course, the chairman of the Brockton Public Library. I mean, I think having BCA in our city is an amazing, you know, program to do because of our diverse community. And I believe, you know, according to some of the people we heard, it gives each of us um, the opportunities not only to talk, but also to broadcast what we have to offer. And I think, of course, we are the city of champion. And um, I urge each and every single one of you, please continue this fight because Comcast does have the money to fund this. And I think the more we, you know, the more we speak, the better the sound will be. And if we come together as a city, not just as single individual, but come together as a group and of course make our voice heard, I think, you know, some of those people from Comcast who have the money will definitely hear our voice because I believe it's important to actually not only put the information out there for some people to see, but for everybody to see. And of course, so far, you know, we, we heard from the fathers, we heard from the pastors, we heard from all kinds of people, you know, in our community. And of course, Paul, you talk about, you know, what you hope to do with the Brockton Public Library. I believe not everybody has the opportunity to go to the Brockton Public Library, but if we have some histories about what we've been doing so far, I think some of our seniors would love to see it. And I do believe that the city has the willingness to do it. As of right now, we don't have the money. So now let's urge, you know, Comcast, you know, to doing this. I believe each and every single one of you believe in urging Comcast to do this. But let's face it, you know, continue calling other people that you know who lives in the city, like the mayor said, to send letters, you know, encourage Comcast to doing this. Because I, I do believe that if one of us stand, you know, nothing probably going to happen. But if the city of Champion, I believe we have over, you know, 95,000 of people in this city. Let's say that 45,000 of us you know, go to Comcast and demand that they, they, you know, they support that, you know, it could be a great statement. So thank you so much to each and every single one of you for taking the time to talk about this issue. And of course, I would like to thank Peggy for having the courage to talk about your family situation. And I believe most people out there would be love to 
learn about it because sometimes they may think that there's nothing for them to do, but having BC in Brockton to give them that hope, to give them the opportunity to do certain things, I think it's amazing. And I would like to thank Glenn Smith, you know, for having, you know, you know, all this association in Brockton, of course, the city of Douglas Park. So even if some people is not there, but they can actually see what we have to offer in this city. And of course, I like to watch the great TV too because I love food. I think it's amazing. <laughs> you know, even if I'm not eating the food, but you can actually see it. So let's see how we can come together, especially in this issue as a city, not as an individual, to making sure that those people at Comcast are willing to do it. I know the mayor has the willingness to push this forward, but I think the mayor cannot do it on his own. I cannot do it on my own. You cannot do it on your own. So it will become an obligation for all of us, not just to speak, but to speak with decency. And of course, get the information, you know, because you need facts. And I think Len Smith truly knows a lot about that. So I would like to be more educated about it. So just in case, I would like to make some statement. Okay, thank you, Gene. Okay, do we have any other community members that were wishing to testify on the record here tonight at tonight's hearing? Okay, then we will move on to city officials and elected officials. So we're now opening up the hearing to comments and testimony from city officials. And I'll call up the ones that I have signed in. And then if there's anyone else here that I missed, uh, we'll afford them the same opportunity. Uh, so first, uh, Ward 7 City Councilor Shirley Asak. Good evening, thank you. And I'm going to be really brief. Um, so I'm Shirley Azak, I'm the Ward 7 City Councilor. I live at 191 Prospect Street. And uh, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Mark Lindy and his team at Broughton Cable Access for the wonderful job that they do in highlighting the positive in our city, from sports to arts and even our local government. So without them um, coming into people's homes, a lot of people would miss out on a lot that goes on in Brockton. So thank you for all you do. Um, Mr. Mayor, thank you for having this, he uh, this hearing this evening. And since I've been on the city council, uh, it's been four years, and even when I was campaigning four and a half, five years ago, the first thing that always came up when I was uh, meeting with residents was Comcast. People are asking for lower rates. We have a lot of um, residents on fixed incomes and um, elderly and they need lower rates. And if not lower rates, then possibly group rates for our elderly that live in high rises. That's come up often. I know every time I walk through Bel Air Towers, that's the first thing they ask me, can we get group, uh, a group rate or a lower rate for our, our cable? So that's really important. Another thing that comes up, um, and many people don't have Comcast, but they'd like to v um, view what uh, goes on in the city. So they feel that the local channel should be available to all residents at no charge. So that's another um, issue that comes up. Many people here tonight have said wonderful things, amazing testimonies, but one thing that's, um, one quote that stands out in my mind is um, the quote that was said by Ms. Deanna Yamin, and that's Comcast can afford it and Brockton deserves it. So and with that, thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Okay, uh, Ward 5 City Councilor Ian Beauregard. Hello, thank you. I'm Ian Beauregard, the Ward 5 City Council. And I want to point out, I want to thank people for coming out here tonight. What I want to emphasize is it's really, really nice out, okay? And these people decided to come here and speak <laughs> on behalf of the people that brought to community access and the emphasis on having you know, certain items, you know, in our future. And let's remember that the team at Broughton Community Access isn't always out in the super nice weather. It's freezing during football season. It rains at some of our holiday parades and our other events that take place. It's really, really warm, usually at a Cape Verdean festival, but they're out there regardless, covering all the remarkable things that take place in the city, because there's many, many remarkable things. And that's how I ended up becoming a volunteer at BCA because there's so many things to cover that are so great in the city that I um, went to class with uh, Professor Tebow and his patients, much, much patients, and uh, we were able to cover a whole lot. 
And there was an emphasis here on covering some of the government meetings, and I agree with that because there's so much that goes on in a city of over 100,000 people with a remarkable school system and, um, you know, a college uh, celebrating over 50 years and a lot of other historical and uh, positive and, of course, our uh, national historic site, D.W. Field Park. So there's so much to cover. There's so much to see. So I encourage people to take the classes, volunteering, because it's really great, you learn really great things, and you can continue to promote your city, and that's positive for everyone that doesn't get a chance to go to every great thing that goes on, and it also promotes our city economically, it promotes the positive individuals in our city. I also want to point out the person that's been working wicked hard tonight that no one's mentioned, and I'm going to highlight her, because I always consider her the boss, and that's Sherry Dent, who's been running around here, seeing that it all goes smoothly. But she doesn't just do it tonight, she does it all the time. She's a tremendous asset to keeping, you know, having a positive response when someone calls community access. I want to close in saying that now I have a little segment called Ward 5 and 10 because I make everything brief because there's so much going on. You have to keep people's attention. I want to highlight that individuals have mentioned repeatedly and it cannot be said enough that we need discounts for seniors, elderly, the, um, those that are disabled and can't get out, and also the sight impaired. It's amazing how many individuals listen to Broughton Community Access and everything that's going on, whether it's the music that's going to be taking place real soon and uh, be covered with, we have a lot of talented bands in um, the city of Broughton, and we're going to see different um, events as we wind down in the summer, M not rushing it, believe me, but uh, we have Summerfest, uh, downtown um, Broughton, uh, it's a music fest. I mean, it just goes on and on. And don't deprive yourselves of all the great things that go on in the city. If you can't make them all, it's great that we have brought in community access. It's great that we have remarkable individuals. And it's vital to emphasize that, yes, we Comcast needs to work with us because they're not the only game. And we want to keep a positive relationship. We want uh, the opportunity to select various channels because I realize many individuals only want certain ones. That's understandable. But most of all, we want to realize that in a community of over 100,000 people, it's best as a large company to work with our community because uh, we have a very positive future ahead of us. So again, thank you everyone for having this tonight. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, now we'd like to uh, invite up a State Representative, Michelle Dubois. Good evening, Rep, how are you? Good evening, Mayor Carpenter. Thank you so much for affording us this opportunity. I just want to reiterate that I support what everybody already said about the great work that BCA does. I have a show called Good Government with Michelle Dubois, and in July I'm going to be having the cat ladies in to talk about what to do with all your feral kittens that you see running around and another person in to talk about the summer activities. So it's a really great way to get information out. But just to back up what um, Councillor Azak said, so my, my mother-in-law lives in the senior housing in California, and um, they are able to neg negotiate some kind of subsidized uh, rate. So I think she pays something like three months for every single three dollars for every single channel. And then if there are really poor folks in her building, they, it's so cheap that they pool it to subsidize it. And I'm not sure if that's something that you could do, but if you could try to negotiate some type of deal like that. Um, and I'm also reading about um, low-income senior citizen internet access that they're rolling out in California, and it's in some of the bigger cities, so I'm not sure if we'd be able to get that, but mentioning that or trying to get it would be great. And then at the State House, there's a bill to require Comcast to move to the HD channels and to have their programming appear on the guide. So I don't know if Brockton could just get that on our own. If we could, that would be great. Mm -hmm. But hearing from a mayor um, of a big city like Brockton that you also think that that's an important thing would help the cause overall, even if we couldn't get it in this contract. So thank you very much, and I appreciate this opportunity. Okay, thank you, Rep. Now, are there any other city or elected officials here tonight that would like to be heard in tonight's hearing? Has everyone that would like to testify had the opportunity? Okay. So that being the case, uh, if there's no further testimony, uh, that concludes tonight's public hearing. 
I will keep tonight's hearing open for 21 days in order to receive additional testimony. Interested parties are encouraged to submit written testimony on any renewal-related issue discussed tonight or indeed regarding any cable-related issue. A written testimony or comments may be submitted to the Mayor's office within 21 days at City Hall, 45 School Street, Brockton, Mass, 02301. If you have any questions about tonight's hearing or the cable television renewal process, please feel free to call the Mayor's office at 508 580-7110. And uh, having said all of that, uh, this will conclude tonight's meeting. And I'd just like to personally thank everyone who participated tonight and provided testimony. Thank you.